In the previous video, we looked at how to do scatter plots and compute correlation in Minitab. So for this video, I want to show you how to take it to the next step, which is to look at the regression analysis. So as a reminder, the data set that we're looking at is the top 100 NBA basketball players from 2013. And what we're looking at for those players is their height and their weight. Looking at the scatter plot that we created in a previous video, we could see that the relationship between height and weight was linear, positive, and moderately strong. And this was backed up by a correlation that we calculated. We found an R of 0.859. So now I'm ready to take it to the next step, which is to look at the regression model, to model the data. To do regression in Minitab, I come over to the Stat menu. I'm going to choose Regression, then choose Regression again, then choose Fit Regression Model. So Stat, Regression, Regression, Fit Regression Model. I enter in my response, which is my Y, so that's going to be weight, and then I'm going to enter in height for my X variable, that's the continuous predictors, and click on OK. And I get all this output in my session window. Now I want to make this just a little bit bigger on my screen for you to be able to talk about it, so I'm going to cut and paste this into Word. This is a similar process that you would use if you were, say, doing this in your homework and wanted to cut and paste the data, the output, to go in your homework. So I'm going to highlight all of it, hit Control C, come over here to Word, and hit Control V. That'll give me everything here. So this is the output that I received in Minitab. As you can see, Minitab gives you lots of stuff. Most of this, you're not going to have any idea what it means or what to do with it at this point in the semester. So I'm going to show you what to look for. So first of all, uh, one really important thing that we're going to find, and it's kind of in the middle here, is the regression equation. So it tells us that the regression equation is weight is equal to negative 314.9 plus 6.821 times height. So looking at this equation, weight, of course, is our response variable. This negative 314.9, this is our intercept. So in the context of this problem, that would say that if we had an NBA basketball player that was zero inches tall, we would expect him to be negative 314 pounds. Clearly, that doesn't make logical sense. Um, but remember, our, our model wasn't created with anybody who had a height of zero. So essentially, the, the intercept in a regression model is more of a, a term to make the model work rather than something that actually has meaning. The really interesting, cool, awesome part of our model is the slope. The slope tells us a, a, quantity, a quantitative value for the relationship between height and weight. So slope in this case was 6.821. So that tells us that for every one inch in height that these basketball players gain, then we expect their weight to go up by 6.821 pounds. So every one inch equals uh, nearly seven pounds of weight on these basketball players. All right, so another thing that we can look at in this output is this coefficients table here. So this just basically kind of gives us more information about the model. Um, occasionally this will have a few more decimal places here under the coefficients column for our intercept and for our slope. And later in the semester we're going to come back and really look at the rest of the numbers in this coefficients table. Another thing that we're going to find interesting in this output here is the R squared. See if I can highlight just that for you. So you can ignore these ones that say R squared adjusted or R squared predicted and just focus on the regular R squared value. So R squared is a measure of how much variation in the response is being explained by our model. So in this case uh, it says 73.78%. That tells us that 73.78% of the variation that we're seeing in weights can be explained by height. The higher your R squared, the better your model is going to be at predicting. So uh, the rest of this stuff, you can just kind of ignore everything for now. I want to focus on the model. Let's talk about what kind of great things we can do with our regression model. All right, so here's my scatter plot, and here is my regression equation. One of the cool things we can do with our regression equation is we can start to make predictions. 
So, you know, if I happen to run into an NBA basketball player at my next party, I can ask him how tall he is, and suppose he tells me that he is 84 inches tall. Well, I could use my regression equation to predict how much he would weigh. So to do that, all I have to do is take 84 and plug it in for height in my equation. So if I take negative 314.9 plus 6.821 times 84, that equals 258.064. So for an NBA player who's 84 inches tall, we would predict that his weight would be 258.064. And you can see that we can make predictions for any anybody. You know, we can go ahead and plug in all kinds of values to make predictions. So making predictions is one great thing about our model. A second thing that we can do with our model is we can plot it onto our scatter plot. So if I want to put a regression line onto a scatter plot, what I do is I need to pick two values of x, plug those into my regression model to get two values of y hat from the model, and then I'll have two points, and if I can connect those two points, then I'll have the line. So I always kind of make a little table, kind of an x, y hat table over here. Keep it organized. Okay, and we can choose any two values of x. However, it's a good idea to choose one that's on the lower end and an x value that's on the higher end. So since I've already made a prediction for 84, I'm going to keep that as one of my values. So I'm going to put x of 84 in there, and that gave me a y hat of 258, essentially. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and choose a smaller value. Let's say 72. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and plug 72 into my regression equation. Negative 314.9 plus 6.821 times 72 this time. And that equals 176.212. So I'll put that over in my table over here, about 176. Now I have two points that were found from the actual regression line. I can plot those two values on my graph. So the first one was 84, so height of 84 and a weight of 258. So I think that is right around this area right here. So I'm going to put a big dot. Actually, when I'm, when I'm doing this by hand, I usually put an X there uh, so I don't get confused with the other dots. In this case, it's red, so it's not going to be that confusing. Okay, my next one, 72 and 176. So I think that's about right there. Put a dot and an X there. And now if I connect these two points with a line, then I have my regression line plotted right there onto my scatter plot. 